only use me for my weed for your TV show. Hi, welcome to Mr. Munch. <laughs> It's, this is cheese. This is cheese. That's the cheese. Jesus. We're melting cheese. <laughs> this week's munchies. Brought so. to you by the gaslit stove that probably shouldn't exist in an apartment. <laughs> Fuck blueberries. <laughs> You're fucking curious. We're making our munchies for this episode. I, I realized in every episode that we've done of Miss and Munchies that I kept forgetting to do the munchies part. He has to pick up all the blueberries, unfortunately. I'm fucking not in any blueberries. <laughs> I'm sure there are easier ways to accomplish things like this. He says I am the king of those people. <laughs> yeah, is it hot? hot? <laughs> Are you the Joe Exotic of pancakes? <laughs> yes, I lure in pancakes with meth. This cake is done. Look, it's strawberry cup. You didn't tell me to say that. Zoom in on our Zoom in on our nut. <laughs> That's the name of anybody who uh, invests in stocks related to marijuana. We'll call it bleeding hearts or <laughs> rosebud. We got pancakes. They have blueberries in them. And a really weird strawberry cum frosting. It does look a little bit like strawberry corn. Mm. Looking for a bigger bowl. And it occurs to me it's time to do the ritual. <laughs> With your window open. <laughs> With a light pointing. Officer, good evening! <sighs> You're not actually gonna get caught. He's been caught before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, officer, I have fucking nukes back there. <laughs> oh, officer, why'd you pull me over? Oh, we suspected you're a bomb felon. You <laughs> <laughs> suspected what? The only bomb I have in this car, or any weapon for that matter, is this ass. <laughs> and if you could please let me go, I really need to go to the bathroom. <sighs> Last week. Can you imagine oh, rolling? wait, wait, we haven't ritualized you. If you ever look at me and have the fucking nerve to say we have ritualized you. <laughs> so anyway, what would you like to be ritualized with? <sighs> Families who get stoned together Daddies. stay together. Are we in frame? Yeah, you're in frame. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm good at talking. Hello and welcome to Mists and Munchies with me, your host, the Marijuana Minstrel. I thought it was Marijuana Magnet. And this is my friend Sumac, because he asked me not to say- Regretfully held hostage. He asked me not to say his real name during these hostage videos. <laughs> Cat, no, no, no. Hi. So last week's question was how did Coyote pull off the Money Burrow trick? Let me this. So I think I said B or C. One of those is correct. Would you like to know which one? Wow. <laughs> you enlighten me. And the answer was indeed C. He fisted the money into the burrow's ass. Just smell it. shoved <laughs> actual cash into a fucking burrow's ass and then said, hey, I bet this will trick some white guys. So if you picked C in your head when you watched this episode last week... If you even watched. You were right. Last week, Coyote scammed a great number of white men, which was fantastic. That was really fun. Um, I really enjoyed that. This week, we have a Cheyenne tail instead of a Chiricahua <laughs> Apache tail. 
quiet on the set, please? Can we turn off the cell phones? What is going on? What is this, 1984? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we show a picture on screen of what, where the Cheyennes live, like what their territory is? Here's a story about Coyote from the Cheyenne tribe. <laughs> Not to be confused with uh, slut bags from South Ipsy. Since we've been talking about Coyote humorously ruining the lives of those around him, I thought it'd be nice if this week we talked about him getting some universal karma and perhaps a little bit more than the prescribed dose. There was once a man by the name Wahio who lived alone. Wahio! Not to be confused with Ohio. He is a trickster in the Cheyenne tribe, like in their mythology. So he's, he's known for being a piece of shit. Unfortunately, living alone sometimes means not having a lot of spare food. And even worse, Wahio had no tools for hunting either. So he had a rough case of the rumbly tumblies. <laughs> what? He's, he's what, is a, what is a rumbly... <laughs> so he visited one of his slightly better off neighbors in hopes that they would take pity on him and offer him food like a sad stray puppy. Upon stepping inside his neighbor's lodge, it became clear that this fucker was loaded. It's cool when you have a rich neighbor. Call me Potato. Call you Potato? Yeah, loaded. Loaded Potato. Oh! It makes sense. What's his name? Wahaho? Wahoo. Woohoo! You could also call him. Woohoo! <laughs> He was named after cocaine. <laughs> cocaine will ruin your brain. Cobain. <laughs> Cobain. Wow. Okay, we're keeping that in. <laughs> no, those are different types of holes in your head, honey. <laughs> oh, God. We're <laughs> <laughs> going to hell. I deserve it. Hi, thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> he had an entire table of fanciful food with such delicacies as dried meat, back fat, and tongues. <laughs> you know, honestly, I kind of like him. Maybe we should go see him for some surgery. <laughs> I, I just find it peculiar that they consider dried meat Back fat and tongues to be delicacies. That's what was like popular at the time. They were like, ooh, I'm really into back fat. Given <laughs> the environment we're in, where someone ate a bat and here we are, let's not talk shit about eating animals right now. Yeah, you got a good point. I'm your local TSA agent, reminding you that eating animals is not your priority. <laughs> if I see you with a fucking animal in your mouth, what am I gonna do? Call the cops? I hardly could stop you from walking into the airport. For the bump. Evidently, whenever the neighbor went hunting, he had a habit of removing the tongues from the elk he killed, oh. and he would save them as he was a collector. House. Can we talk about how wet? Just like, imagine... <laughs> Seven this guy would hang these tongues all throughout his lodge as a decoration. I like to lodge a complaint. <laughs> <laughs> it's illogical, as someone can do. Apparently, Wahio shared a similar tongue-related affinity because he longed for his neighbor to offer him some tongues to eat. His neighbor, not being a mind reader, only offered him dried meat, and Wahio then returned to his own lodge to internalize his feelings. I just want to internalize... Internalize your feelings. Angry. <laughs> I don't think I can internalize my feelings, I just get mad. I just want you to know, he took it the wrong way. Uh, I'm taking it real personal because this guy didn't give me tongues that I didn't ask for. Upon returning to his tongueless abode, Wahio noticed a coyote nearby and motioned to him to enter the lodge. This is where coyote finally comes in. Wahio, somehow already aware this particular coyote could talk, informed coyote of the tasty and tonguey treat that he'd witnessed in the home of his neighbor. Coyote caught your tongue? Can you write that down in there? No, that was just me. Wow, he landed a proper joke for once. Maybe he wrote it down. I no, just need to be. No. <laughs> so he asked Coyote to come back to the house with him in hopes that they could chow together. The man will not let me in, for everyone knows coyotes always steal meat, Coyote noted. As they do, yeah. I, yeah. He says, Maybe I'm back. Well, said Wahio, let us arrange a plan by which you can enter. What can we do? Walk through this the door. <laughs> Walk through the fucking door? Like, All I'm saying is, you got two feet, and like, you can move yourself forward. Yeah. Why do you need a coyote, like, to make a plan for you? What? Coyote. Oh, man. One day in high school. Oh, that was Kuda. Never mind. Oh. After giving this plan a great deal of thought, Coyote at last proposed a suggestion. Oh, wait. No, 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 he wasn't going to suggest they get married. This is awkward. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. 
I, I still have the rest of the story to tell you. Yeah. We can talk about we can talk about it later. I don't want to talk to you later. You dress up like a woman and tie me up like a baby and carry me there. He's gonna fuck the babysitter. Give me good things to eat when you get the meat. For some reason, <laughs> there's a lot of really gay what? sounding innuendos in this fucking story. I don't think I don't they're know. very gay. I'm picturing more like a vagina eating the meat, like a whatever. It's a cumulative effect. It gets gayer, I promise. Well, Hayo agreed. It is good. I will give you a part of everything that is given to me. <laughs> so Ohio proceeded to tie up Cody like a baby. Then presumably watch a drag makeup tutorial video on YouTube so he could dress up like a struggling mother. Are you the mother of that child? Yes, yes I am. <laughs> Holy yes, Mr. Jefferson. <laughs> I'm poor widow. <laughs> okay. He then carried his new baby on his arm and again returned to his neighbor's lodge. He said to his neighbor, My child is crying for food. Wahaya well, whispered to Coyote to cry for tongue. And so he did. Cry for tongue. It already gets me going. <laughs> okay. Where tongue? Where tongue? Ah. What does the baby want? The neighbor asked. He is crying for tongue. Without hesitation, the neighbor immediately began boiling a tongue. When it was done, the unnecessarily generous neighbor gave the tongue to Ohio. Oh no, the ride. child is coming! <laughs> I hope not, it's a baby! <laughs> Who selfishly gave Coyote a small taste and then began gorging himself on the tongue. Gay. Give me some too, I am hungry, Coyote demanded. Ohio did not comply, however. Rather, he dipped his fingers in the tongue soup and only allowed Coyote to lick them. Hot. <laughs> yeah. Cooked tongue. Wet willy. Ew. Finally, Coyote got pissed and threatened to snitch, saying, I am going to tell him how you dress me up like a baby to get some tongue. <laughs> I see why you chose this one. It seems like a real, uh... It's thing. a real, it's a real go-getter. <laughs> well, Hayo practically inhaled the entire tongue, giving none to Coyote. He proceeded to leave the lodge as quickly as possible so his neighbor would not discover his disguise or baby. I'm <laughs> baby. Wahio well, removed his drag at a nearby river, at which point he addressed Coyote. You're doing so good, Jack. Thank you, Jack. You're also Jack now. Ah, we're, we're Jack. We're together. both Wait, looking at the Wait, if we jumped off together, we would be Jack off. Jack. Jack, away! <laughs> you were going to tell about me, were you? You want to keep quiet when I'm eating? You're too much trouble to me. I don't know why he said it like a fucking 1940s villain. I don't know why. You're too much trouble, you see. <laughs> oh, you were going to tell about me, were you? You were going to walk in this town, you see. Call me Henry. You want to make it in Hollywood? Yes, Papa. He then threw Coyote, still tied up, into the river. We have a quiz for you. Except I will definitely not be back next time. The story ended with Coyote just dying. That was it. He just got thrown in a river. That was the hole. That was the hole. No, don't pay attention to the hole. My hole's better. Well, let me tell you something about Ohio. He has many, many names. Okay. It's Coyote. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which of the following was not a Cheyenne nickname? for the trickster Wahio. A, Old Man Spider. B, Blue Scap. Or C, White Man. These are all real terminology from actual Cheyenne mythology, just so you know. That's really hard to read. I had to translate it and everything. Oh my God, he like went to India or whatever. Yeah, like Christopher Columbus did. I found Hawaii. <laughs> I found something. <laughs> Is white. <laughs> I found Why? some brown people. They must be Indians. I Fucking... must take over. He didn't even really take over. He just slaughtered them all and then left. No, he didn't even slaughter them. He had to have a disease that he brought with him. You know what? Here, let me read a story to you. Christopher Columbus was a fucking pussy. Oh, you notice how the page is blank? Just like his fucking notorieties. So fuck Christopher Columbus is kind of what we're getting at. So what do you think the answer is? Probably B. Guess we'll just have to wait till next week. That's not true, I can just ask. But you guys don't get to know until next week. Unless you like and subscribe. No. And DM me your number. Okay, let... Please.
days. This is better than I hot pancakes, honestly. That's not hard considering I didn't shit in them. Well, thank you for watching Miss and Munchies with me, your host, the marijuana minstrel. <laughs> and my friend Sumac. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for being here. I'm just happy to be recognized. I promise as soon as this blows up, I will give you payment. <laughs> Damn, I'm never gonna get paid. <laughs> Hi, your neighborhood gay. Um, if you could like and subscribe. Really Orphans would really get their wings. Uh, Red Bull, some shit or something. If we get famous, I will donate to orphanages. That way they will get adopted faster, hopefully. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day. Stay baked, buds. Is it like ridiculous? It's not ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I got myself up for that to be so much more red. <laughs> Okay, how's the head? How's how's the head looking? How's, how's my head? head? If you or someone you know are Carol diagnosed Baskin. with Carol Baskin disorder, <laughs> you should call Joe Exotic, <laughs> otherwise known as CBD. Oh it's not as soothing as the recreation stuff. <laughs> you know, I often get Kuda confused with Coochie. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Why did I want India to be Peter for some reason? Hey, hey, <laughs> quick, do your best Jamaican accent. Bang. <laughs> Terrible. Thanks.